Um, this is Josie Muncy with Marion Audubon Society, and this is our second program uh, on via Zoom. So uh, you had the program last month with Leroy about perching birds. Well, he's going to do another program, but it's called Other Birds. So Leroy Simon, we'll let you take it away. Just a reminder for everybody, uh, Thursday the 21st, we have a walk at Rainbow Spring State Park and we're meeting at 815. So Leroy, take it away. Where are you meeting? Uh, in the parking lot at Rainbow Springs. Okay. I'll go ahead and introduce yourself and then I'll start the sharing. All right. My name is Leroy Simon. I'm a member of the Marion Audubon Society. If you missed my program last month, you can still see it on the uh, web. There's a link on the website of our Marion Audubon. To YouTube. And to YouTube, so you can catch up on the program I had a couple or last month. This program is, has quite a lot of ducks in it. There's a few uh, wading birds and uh, has hawks in it. I th hope you'll enjoy it. Yeah. All right. I say and I'm going to take this off. Okay. Okay. And all you have to do is hit the enter key. Okay. This uh, first uh, image is a couple of sandhill cranes that were flying by at sunset time near my house. Oh, there you go. This is an ear grebe. This was taken at, in Utah at Bear River. Bear River is a big famous wildlife sanctuary on the north part of Salt Lake. This is the pied-billed grebe, which is taken in the Ocala wetland at the uh, lake that's uh, right near the entrance. This is a family of Western grebes that was taken at Bear River in Utah. It shows a contented baby on the parent's back, a, a parent with satisfaction of raising a family and a young bird eager to get a bite, bite full of minnow. This is an anhinga that was taken at uh, Sweetwater in Gainesville. It was just about to take off. About one second later, it would have been airborne. Also in Gainesville is an American bittern. American bitterns are very well camouflaged, but this one happened to be sitting in the open, but a lot of times they're hidden in the weeds, like this next picture of a uh, lease bittern. This lease bittern is kind of hidden in the weeds, but he's Poking, out, poking his eye out through some wild rice, looking at me. These are frigate birds that were near uh, Fort DeSoto, by the, near the entrance to Fort DeSoto. Uh, I don't see them every time I go to Fort DeSoto, but they are there occasionally. And they usually are flying pretty high. This is a bird behavior. This uh, reddish egret on the right is chasing a great egret away from his fishing territory. It's a territory, fishing territory dispute between the two birds. And the smaller reddish egret was the aggressor. This is a reddish egret that was taken in Fort DeSoto. And the, this is uh, out of the breeding plumage. You can see his legs are kind of a dull gray. The reddish egret comes in either reddish like this or it can be a white morph like the next, next image. In this uh, white morph image, you can see the bill is very brightly colored. It's a bright pink and a dark black. And the legs are a blue black, which is kind of unusual. 
for the legs on a bird to, be, to have that much blue on them. Just a little blue heron during a time when they're molding from a juvenile to an adult. The juvenile little blue herons are always white, but when they turn into an adult, they're kind of a blue and gray looking. And here, as a, when they're changing like this, they get all splotchy looking. This was taken in Fort DeSoto. This is a spoonbill. It was coming in for a landing at Merritt Island. I think the best place that I know of to fo regularly photograph spoonbills is in uh, uh, January at uh, Merritt Island. It seems like they're always there during that month. And they sometimes, if you go kind of early in the day, especially, they're real close to the road. And uh, you can see, watch them coming in to land in the marsh. This picture of a Canada goose was taken at the, the villages in Florida along 441. And uh, there's several of them there that uh, have been read made a home there around the, of the lake in the villages. These are snow geese from uh, Bosque del Pache, New Mexico. Bosque del Pache is a famous wildlife reserve in New Mexico. You can read all about it on the internet, this famous place. And uh, I went there to photograph some of the birds that, that spend the winter there. There's another picture of snow geese. These snow geese uh, spend the morning sitting in a, a long uh, puddle-like lake along the close to the road, and they uh, spend the night there sitting in the in the water. And when the morning comes, after it warms up a little bit, then they all take off at once and fly to the grain field where they'll be feeding. This is an Egyptian goose. This is not a native goose, but uh, they have them here and there. They have some in uh, uh, in Ocala at the uh, uh, science near the science center there, and they uh, they have some at uh, by the villages where this one was taken. These are black-bellied whistling ducks. This little group was taken in Gainesville, Sweetwater. And there is a lot of them up there. They also have quite a few in Ocala at uh, the Discharge Park. This is a wood duck that was taken near my home. I was sitting in a blind. This was my first wood duck picture. And uh, sitting in a blind, I was able to get very close to it. You can also get pretty close to them in uh, uh, Tuscawilla Park in Ocala. They are there just about all year round. And the next picture was taken in Tuscola Park, Ocala, of a female. The light was bad, but I got a picture of the female with the babies. This is a model duck that was uh, coming in for a landing. This was in uh, the, the uh, Ocala Discharge Park. And the next one shows the same kind of a duck, a model duck showing the chevron on his wing. There's a bright blue, kind of a colorful looking duck with the orange feet and a, and a yellow bill and brown body and a bright blue chevron. This is a mallard duck that was taken at uh, Tuscawilla Park. The uh, green is very bright green at a certain light if the sun hits the head of a certain way, it'll be real bright green. But here you can see it, part of the head was in the shadow and that's kind of dull looking. But where the sun hits it, it'll be a real bright green. This is a pair of blue wing teals. These were taken in Merritt Island in the winter time. Uh, uh, some of the several duck species spend the winter at uh, Merritt Island. This is a pair of, of uh, blue-winged teals. This is a green-winged teal. 
This one was taken at uh, in New Mexico at Bosque del Pache. It's the only picture I ever taken of a green winged teal. It's a bird that's evaded me most of the time. This next one is taken at uh, Bear River. This is a cinnamon teal. And uh, it, it was uh, in kind of a muddy water, but I, uh, that was the only, only time I got a picture of a cinnamon teal. This is called a gadwall duck. This was also taken at, in uh, New Mexico at Bosque del Pache. <clears throat> this shoveler, shoveler was uh, taken at Merritt Island. And then they're there in the winter, just like the pintails. This is a pintail. I think of this as being our most graceful duck. It looks really streamlined with that pointed tail. This is a pair of ringneck ducks. The ring on the bill is much more evident than the ring neck, but they gave it a ring neck, a, a name of a ring neck, but uh, usually the, you can't usually discern a ring around the neck. A similar duck that looks quite a bit like it is the uh, Lesser scoff. This was also taken in the villages along 441. There's quite a few of them that spend the winter there. This is a red breasted merganser. I don't know if this was a male or a female. In the winter time, the males lose their bright colors and have a look like a female. There's a female buffalo head that was taken in. Uh, at uh, up in Gainesville at Sweetwater. <clears throat> no, I, this one was at uh, Ocala. This one was Ocala at, at uh, Wetland in Ocala. And this is a male that was taken in New Mexico in their high breeding plumage. This is the female of the hooded meganser. This was taken in uh, Ocala at the, at, the, at the discharge park. Down toward the back of the park, they had a small pond. And uh, in the spring, it had uh, there was some ducks in it. And uh, this was one of them. And the male duck was also there. Here's the male of the hooded meganser. To get the picture of the wing of the ducks, when, when their wings are like this, doing a wing flap, I photograph, adjust my camera and set it on the bird when he's sitting in the water preening. Sometimes they'll preen for five or 10 minutes. But if you keep your lens on them and keep focused on them, when they're finished preening, they'll just about always rise up and flap their wings. And that's when you want to get the picture. This is a long tailed duck. It's native to the United States, but it doesn't come down to Florida. They're, they spend the winter along the Atlantic shore down as far as about Atlantic City. And in the, in the, in the breeding season, and they're, they're further north up into Canada. But it's a pretty duck. And this was taken in a zoo in Ohio. This is a harlequin duck. It's a foreign duck, Asian duck. It was also taken in a zoo it rivals the wood duck for being a brightly colored duck. I think of the three most colorful ducks. I think of the harlequin duck, the wood duck, and some of the eider ducks, which I've never had a chance to photograph eiders. This is another uh, duck from the zoo. This is a uh, scaly crested meganser female. This was taken to the zoo in Toledo. And here's the male. The next several pictures were taken in Texas. This is a turkey vulture. The turkey vulture is, uh, has the red head. So you can tell it when you see it st st standing, you can tell right away it's a turkey vulture and you see it's a vulture with a red head. And the next one is the uh, black vulture. These were taken in a bird, bird ranch down in Texas. 
I was fortunate enough to spend five days at this bird ranch. You can't live at the bird ranch, but I spend it all day there for five days. And I got a lot of pictures there of hawks and buzzards. This next one is taken the same place, same bird ranch. The bird ranch I went to was Laguna Seca bird ranch, but they have other bird ranches in southern southeast Texas that cater to bird photographers. These uh, ranches in, uh, that I went to and some of the others are the same, set up the same way. They have uh, six blinds at the bird ranch. Three of the blinds are for morning light and three of the blinds are for afternoon light. So you always have the light coming from your back. So you have good light on the bird and they have uh, usually have setups for the birds to land and they feed them all year round. So there's always birds around the uh, bird ranch. And uh, they charge you to go to, to be there. And uh, the uh, different, different people charge different amounts. The lady that I went to was the leader of my group charged, I think it was $325 a day. But some of the professional photographers, they get over $1,000 a day to lead their group. I tried to book it for next year. I tried to book it last uh, April, but they told me the, I wanted to go in a spring migration time. But the uh, they were I was told that the uh, all of April and all of May was filled up. I couldn't get five days any time during either one of those months. This is a young Kara Kara. The, the youngest caracaras like that, uh, they don't have any bright colors on them. They're, they're all kind of a model, dull yellow color with no, uh, no bright colors. But when the caracaras came to the bird ranch, they, they set out a block of frozen chicken parts out in front of the blind. And then the vultures would come and land on the uh, perches near the blind. And uh, you could get close-ups of them, and uh, there was lots of vultures there. The uh, mostly crested caracaras. There would be like twenty crested caracaras at once out there sitting and sitting around or feeding on the chicken parts. And this is one of the adult, uh, an adult crested caracara that's coming in for a landing. Here's a pair of bald eagles. All the bald eagle pictures I've taken have been flight pictures that I took at the dump in Marion County, the Marion County dump. The younger one on the left is a juvenile. The, uh, they don't get a white head until four or five years old till they're quite older. But here you have a young one and an adult, same picture. They was coming in for a landing. This is an osprey that just plucked a fish out of the Gulf. And this was taken at Fort DeSoto. This is a snail kite, a male. The female kites are, snail kites are brown. Uh, they feed exclusively on snails. And uh, there's uh, they mostly apple snails. They, they're large snails. That, and you can see where he, splashed down in a bottom corner where he picked the snail up out of the lake. And they usually take the snail and fly over to a fence post or a perch someplace in a tree to feed on the snail. They have an extra long curved beak and uh, extra long talons that help them dig the snail out of the shell. This is a swallow-tailed kite. The swallowtail kite images I've taken have all been west of uh, Oxford, Florida. They have, uh, sometimes they have melon fields over there and they, uh, in uh, August, the uh, first, or first half of August, especially, they, they'll soar over these melon fields and feed on insects and they uh, eat the insects while they're flying. From the bottom, they look like they're half white and half black. 
But I, the next image shows one that's banking, shown from above. Shown from above, you can see looks like they're mostly all black. They're extremely graceful and they sail around and, and fly around real fast. And they, uh, they don't have to flap their wings very much, but they, they adjust them one way and another to catch the wind currents. And uh, they're fun to watch. This is another kite. This is a Mississippi kite. This was taken in the Ocala wetlands at, uh, at the discharge park. I took this picture up in Wisconsin. A friend of mine lived in the middle of a big woods and he had bird feeders out and he had a, a blind set up by his driveway. And uh, this uh, sharp shinned hawk came and stood up there in the, on a tree and was looking over the place. And he came down once, and but I don't think he got anything. If he did, I couldn't see him carrying anything off. But he was waiting for something to give him a chance to come down and pounce on it. This is the red-shouldered hawk. This one was taken down by Lake Okeechobee, but they have uh, quite a few of them in Ocala at the Ocala wetlands. The next couple pictures are taken at the Ocala wetlands. There's one in flight, showing a lovely pattern on his wing. This is a uh, red-tailed kite or a red-tailed hawk, juvenile, that was taken in my backyard. I have a, I had this, uh, I had bird feeders in my backyard, and this was a woodpecker post that I, uh, when I walk around in the woods, I picked up this uh, log that was uh, something I could carry that, uh, and I cut it off to make the right length, and it was about a seven foot long log that I, set up right in my backyard. I used a, uh, a cement block to set it in and prop it so it would stand up. And I hung uh, suet on it. And this, this uh, hawk didn't come. And all he did was set on the top of the log. I, I think he was hoping to get some birds at the bird feeder. But he hung around for a couple of days and he never come back. This is a gray hawk that was taken in the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum. They have some hawks and owls that they uh, have caged at the uh, Arizona Desert Museum and they're trained. They're not banded, which is, for the most part, the, most of them were not banded, but they, uh, they would train them and they would have hawks flying over to the, over above the crowd and landing on these perches near the near the trail and uh, they would the tr trainers would put a little hamburg on the perch and then the hawks would come from where they were cooped I suppose at on the other side of the park and they would come flying over real low over the crowd and land on these perches and uh, you could get pictures of them this is a northern harrier that was taken at Utah at Bear River and I believe he has a, a coot or some kind of a water, little water bird clutched under his, under his, uh, with his hole, his foot holding, holding it on to it. This is a Harris's hawk. At the Arizona Desert Museum, the hawks that are trained, they had like half a dozen of these uh, Harris's hawk, which was their most common hawk. And, uh, they would circle around and fly and bub, and you could get pictures of them circling around, and and then they would put the hamburger on the post or whatever it was they were putting on the post for them, and they'd come down and get it, and then they'd go out and circle around some more. This one that does have a band on it. This is the largest USA hawk. This was also taken at Arizona Sonora Desert Museum. They only had one of this hawk. Yeah, in fact, all the hawks and owl, I only saw one, but the Harris's hawk, they had several of them, but the, most of the hawks, they only had one. But this hawk was uh, very cooperative and looking, one that it felt like 
occasionally you get a connection with a bird that seems to be have a connection with you. He's looking right at you. This is a kestrel or American kestrel that's a, a male that was taken at Ocala wetland at the discharge park. They have quite a few of them up there and they have nesting boxes for them up there and they, uh, they use the nesting boxes. I've also seen uh, a nest, they have a nest of them at, uh, uh, by the science center up there in Ocala. This is another one of a male that was taken at the Ocala wetland. And here's one of a uh, female. The female was coming in to land on the top of that uh, tree, a dead tree. You can see he spread his tail and uh, banking, getting ready to come down to land. He lowered his feet, getting ready to land on top of that log. And then for some reason, when he saw that woodpecker, he veered off and didn't land. Well, I got a picture of him just before he veered off. This is a chucker. It's a quail-like bird that was taken in uh, Antelope Island in near about 50 miles north of Salt Lake. It's an island in the middle of Salt Lake. Here's a turkey uh, that was taken in Wisconsin. I visited this friend of mine and he lived in the middle of the big woods and he uh, spread corn around his driveway in the mornings and uh, the turkeys would come and they were all hens except for this one that was a tom. You can see the tom has this long beard on his chest. You can see he has a spur on his leg and he's colorful, but I never did it doing that uh, strut where they spread their wings like a like a peacock and strut around. I didn't see him do that. This is the plain shakalaka that was taken in uh, Texas. This was in a, a town a wildlife preserve near where I was staying. And uh, this is a green or uh, white winged pheasant. This was taken at Bosque del Pache, New Mexico. The pheasants are not native to the USA, but They've uh, brought them here and they breed here and the ringneck has come become naturalized along with uh, a couple other uh, varieties that uh, are not as popular as the ringneck. This uh, green uh, white winged pheasant was uh, taken in uh, New Mexico at Bosque del Pache. Here's the only picture I have of a, of a ringneck pheasant. They're hard to get a picture of. They're very weary. And uh, it was running and full, full out. And it, was, it was a long way from the car. And I, I was using an 800 millimeter lens with a extender, a 1.4 extender on it. And I got a picture of them running. It's the only picture I have of a, of a ring neck. This is a female of the gambles quail that was taken in uh, Bosque del Pache, New Mexico, right by the entrance to the park. And uh, I was sitting in the car, taking it out of the window. And here's the male that was in that same area, taking a, a couple minutes apart. This is a, a Bob White that was taken at uh, Joe Overstreet Landing. Joe Overstreet Landing is a good birding area that's uh, 20 miles south of St. Cloud. And uh, it's a, uh, a road that goes back to Lake Kissimmee. And uh, when it gets back to Lake Kissimmee, there's a boat, la boat launch there. And uh, sometimes you see snail kites there and sometimes you see eagles there and there's always some kind of birds around there near the boat launch. But this was taken along the fence the uh, road going back there has uh, cattle passengers on both sides of the road. It has fences along both sides of the road and uh, birds like to get on the barbed wire or on the po fence posts. And uh, 
the pictures I've taken along that road were all taken from inside the car. This Bob White was taken down in Texas at the Bird Ranch. There's a, a few of them come around the feeders, but they were very wary. They'd come around a couple of times and then they'd leave. You wouldn't see them all the time, but uh, I did have a chance to photograph some Bob Whites there. This picture was taken in a zoo. This bird is native to Southern Arizona, south of, uh, south of Tucson. They're, they're not common, but they, are, they do live, live in Southern Arizona. This is a limpkin. Limpkin's another bird that feeds on snails. The uh, limpkins wade in the shallow water and uh, when they uh, pick up a snail, the snails are underwater. And when they reach down and get a snail, they'll pick it up and take it over to the bank and uh, eat it on the bank. They'll put it down, peck at it until they get the, the meat out of the snail and they'll leave empty snail shells around the bank. You see quite a lot of them down in uh, Leesburg at Venetian Gardens. That's where this one was taken. This is a Sora. It's a little small chicken-like bird that's uh, a marsh bird that's uh, very secretive. I only got one picture of one once, and that was taken from a boardwalk in uh, uh, Gainesville at the uh, Sweetwater in Gainesville. This is the Virginia rail taken that same morning. The only time I ever got pictures of either of these rails was there in uh, Gainesville at Sweetwater. But I only saw them one time. Other times, I didn't see them at all. I believe this is a clapper rail. This was taken in uh, uh, Merritt Island. This is a purple gallinule and a baby chick. Purple gallinules are very common in Leesburg at uh, Venetian Gardens. And uh, people feed them down there. I mean, a lot of people feed them. So if you walk down there and you got bread or popcorn and you throw some out, you'll have a whole slew of birds coming around. And uh, a lot of ibises, a lot of crack grackles, and uh, you'll have uh, these uh, purple gallinules and common gallinules come to snatch up the popcorn or whatever. The baby checks on the purple gallinu are all dark. The next picture is a uh, common gallinu. The baby checks on the common gallinu have this bald head with the red spot. And they, the common gallinu, the babies can swim. But the, in the uh, purple gallinus, the adults and the babies, I've never seen either one of them swim. But they walk on the uh, lily pads. They have long, long toes that can spread their weight around and walk on uh, the vegetation. These are sandhill cranes from New Mexico at Bosque del Apache. Uh, it's one of the wintering areas where sandhill cranes that are migrant and migrate down to New Mexico and spend the winter as a big flock. And the, uh, they, during the mating time, they do this dance where they jump up in the air and flap their wings and squawk. And it's kind of interesting. And here's a baby of the sandhill crane. It was taken near my, near my house. There was a lake near my house and they, uh, they were breeding nearby. And at a, a, uh, a few blocks away, there's a pond that has a lot of vegetation around it. It's, uh, uh, where, where they do uh, water, where they purify the water from sewers and stuff that uh, they spend a lot of time around there. This is a whooping crane. Several years ago, I don't know how to figure it out when, how many years ago this was taken in. It was probably 10 years, more than 10 years ago. But the only time I ever got a picture of a whooping crane 
I did a, a presentation, a slideshow in uh, for the Audubon Society in Marion County one time. And there was a lady, they called her the crane lady. And she told me where I could go to get a picture of a whooping crane. It seems there was this uh, guy owned a house right on the edge of a big pond that was in uh, Leesburg. And she told me where he lived and I, I could go down there and take a picture of him. So I went down there and sure enough, there was a pair of cranes, male and a female. And they both had these uh, radio collars on their legs because it's such a rare bird that the uh, authorities keep track of all the baby, all the, the uh, whooping cranes. They're quite impressive. This is a Wilson's plover with the baby check. This was taken last year, summer at their spring at uh, down in uh, Fort DeSoto. And the uh, baby chick was running along and keeping in step with the adult. I thought it was kind of cute. I, I think, I can't say for sure, but I think this was the first time that they, they took the baby chicks down by the water. The, and uh, the baby chicks went out in the water a little ways and but they didn't stay very long and they wanted to come back. So uh, it was headed back toward where the drier land was, where they were, where they had their nest. This is a kill deer that was taken in uh, Ocala wetland. And it was, uh, it was pre uh, preening, setting in, standing in the water preening. And after a while when, when he was, Finished preening, he jumped up and flapped his wings, just like the ducks. So I was focusing on him and waiting for him to flap his wings. And when he was done preening, then he flapped his wings and I got the picture. Here's another kill deer that was taken in Ocala wetland that was wading around in a shallow pond that had a lot of weeds in it. This is an American abacet. This was taken in Utah at uh, Bear River. This is the breeding plumage. And they're quite colorful in the breeding plumage. The next picture shows an American abacet in Florida. In Florida, you see them in the wintertime. This was taken at Merritt Island. In the wintertime, they only, they're only black and white, but they're still a pretty impressive looking bird. This is a black neck still that was taken in uh, Bear River in Utah. They have them at Merritt Island too, but the, the, the pictures I have were mostly, mostly taken at uh, Bear River. This is a solitary sandpiper that was uh, taken in uh, Ocala wetland. The only time I've ever got a picture of it, it was taken earlier this year. This is a redneck farallope that was uh, taken in uh, Utah at, uh, from Antelope Island in uh, Salt Lake. And these black spots on the water, those are dead uh, uh, flies. Uh, they, these uh, flies were real thick around the shoreline and they were laying on the water and, and uh, a lot of dead ones on the water and a lot, a lot, of, a lot of live ones on the water. And the, these uh, birds were feeding on the flies. This is an Inca dove it was taken down in Texas, in uh, south, southeast Texas. They have a scaly looking uh, image for, because of the edge of their feathers being tipped with a different color. And this is a white tip dove. The white tip dove is bigger than a, than a morning dove, smaller than a pigeon, that the city pigeons, but uh, that was at uh, Edinburgh, Texas. This is a burrowing owl. I've only got a couple pictures of burrowing owls, one taken out west and this one taken in Florida. This was taken on the west of Gainesville near the Gulf. And these burrowing owls spend a lot of their time right close to their burrows. 
So the uh, burrows were marked with the flags because they don't want nobody coming up and mowing over their burrows or getting real close to them. So I kept my distance. I used the long lens when I took the picture. This is a great horned owl. This, uh, this owl was another bird that was taken at, uh, at uh, in uh, Arizona Sonora Desert Museum that they were lured over to the perch with a little piece of meat. And then uh, another bird that was looking right at me when I took his image. This is a snowy owl. The snowy owls live in, uh, come down in the United States in the northern part of the United States in the winter, but they uh, spend most of their time up in Canada. And this, this one was taken in the Toledo Zoo. This is an acorn woodpecker. The only picture I have of an acorn woodpecker, it was taken on, on a mountaintop near Arizona, or at, uh, near Tucson in Arizona. This is a hairy woodpecker. The hairy woodpecker looks very much like a downy woodpecker, but has a, a longer bill. It's a little bit larger than a downy. It has white along the edge of the tail. The downy woodpeckers usually have uh, uh, bars along the tail where that, where that white area is on the tail. This particular picture, I figured out after I was taken sitting in a blind, I figured out after a while that the birds were using the top of this log that I placed there as a staging area before they would fly over to the suet. And uh, when I figured out that's what they were doing, I, I focused my lens on the top of that uh, log. And then I just waited for a bird to land on it. And I thought, well, the next bird that lands on it, I'm just going to take pictures until he flies off. So when he landed on top of that log, I just held the shutter down and, and took uh, fast images and just held it down, let, kept taking images until he flew. I got took about 30 pictures, but I got one picture when he flew was what I, was what I wanted. And this is a hair, uh, downy woodpecker that has the, they're smaller and has a shorter bill. This was taken in my backyard at the woodpecker log and I uh, had suet in there to, to attract the woodpeckers. The, the downy and the hairy, the males have a little red spot on the back of their head, both the hairy and the downy, but the uh, females don't have that red spot. So that previous picture was a female because it, it didn't have a red spot. This is a uh, pileated woodpecker. <clears throat> pileated woodpeckers, uh, have a distinctive way that they bang on the wood, whereas the uh, uh, other woodpeckers have, have more of a rat-a-tat-tat type of a peck on the wood. The uh, palliated woodpeckers have more of a loud, dull thump, thump, thump when they bang, bang on the wood. They're, they're about the size of a small crow. This is a juvenile red-headed woodpecker. Red-headed woodpeckers in the juvenile stage have a brown head. All my woodpecker pictures in this image, in this series was taken at uh, Ocala wetlands. And uh, I, I lived in Florida for like 30 years before I got woodpecker pictures. And I found out that they, you could get them at uh, Sweetwater or at the uh, Ocala Recharge, Discharge Park. The way I got the pictures, uh, I would be focusing on the woodpecker and then uh, when it flew, I'd get the picture. With, with this uh, pictures here of the woodpeckers flying up to this uh, dead tree, he's got an acorn, an acorn in his beak. It, when they would get these acorns, I believe they were storing them in these old woodpecker holes. 
or dead dead areas in the tree. The whole tree was dead, but they were. I think they were taking the wood, the acorns, and going up there and storing them in some of these holes. <clears throat> but uh, so what I did, I had my camera on a tripod on the walkway. It was about 98 feet from the tree because I have a, a uh, thing on my camera that tells how far away it was. So to the from the walkway to the top of that tree it was about 98 feet. And I had a 500 millimeter lens, which covered an area bigger than that I, had, I cropped for the picture. But uh, when I would see a woodpecker flying up toward that tree, I'd go like right at that tat with my camera, hold down the shutter and take a bunch of images and hopefully get some of the woodpecker flying up to the tree, which I did. In this picture, is kind of in between the brown of the juvenile and the red of the adult. They get kind of a maroon, a splotchy looking head or a maroon looking head until they change into a full adult. Next picture is a full adult. You can see in the full adult, they have the bright red head. And the, this is the last picture in this show. This is a yellow bellied sapsucker that was taken in Texas. At uh, near Edinburgh. And that's the end of my slideshow. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Leroy. Um, I think there's uh, two questions out there, and uh, Marty, can uh, you see the questions there? Hold on. <clears throat> well, uh... Karen Madigan says these photos are phenomenal, and they certainly are. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. So it's nice to hear somebody appreciates my images. Oh, they are they are wonderful. And now yeah. she also she also has another question. Are any of the birds hold on here? Uh, are any of the birds you photograph endangered? Oh yeah. I would think probably some of them are endangered or else uh, I, I'm, I'm sure the uh, Montezuma quail from Arizona, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's an endangered one. Yeah, I, 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 can, yeah. I can add to that. The Montezuma quail, they're trying to reintroduce in a place called Buenos Aires National Wildlife Preserve, which is right on the Mexican border in Southern Arizona. I've gone down there a few times, but I've never seen any. Well, like I said, this one was taken in a zoo, but I yeah, uh, I figured <laughs> I wanted to have a picture of it. Yeah, the the forest ranger told me they're they're really spooky. They're really hard to see. The other endangered bird I didn't have it in this picture in a slideshow because I didn't have that good of a picture of it. But the the they had a uh, masked Bob White at the Arizona Desert Museum. They had a pair of them, but. Uh, I got pictures of them, but the uh, lightning was kind of poor and I didn't put it in this uh, show. What about the woodpeckers this morning? You had another question? No, you got a lot of uh, compliments, Leroy. Awesome photos. Uh, <laughs> Leroy, thank you for a wonderful slideshow and presentation. Fantastic photos. Um, lots and lots and lots of, uh, of course, we know that you have phenomenal photo photography pictures for sure. Uh, well, this um, this morning we were greeted with uh, six pileated woodpeckers at the uh, Jervy Gant uh, Park. It was just oh. absolutely phenomenal to see six of them at one time. Wow. Hey, Leroy, I have a question. Uh, when you take photos of the ducks, all these different ducks, you know what they are when you take the photo and you go home and look at the photo and look it up in the book? <laughs> most of them I know. Really? I know most of them. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah. Another question, I, Leroy. I have, I have trouble with ducks, I don't know why. Yeah, another question. Have you photographed all of the woodpecker species? Well, no, heck no. There's a lot of <laughs> woodpeckers. I, uh, they, they got a lot of them. I haven't even photographed all of them that's in Florida. The, yeah. I never seen a cockadated woodpecker that's in Florida. And there's a lot of other woodpeckers I've never even seen. 
in Tucson, a lot of backwood peckers are all over the place. But all right. I, well, I, uh, I would say one thing before closing. Like I mentioned before, I have another program, if you haven't seen it yet, that you might want to go on a website and look at the one called Perching Birds, which was given last month. And uh, another comment is that that I have another show on birds that's called Birds at the Beach that uh, is a similar in length and it has uh, birds that you find around the ocean and the, the, the beach. Like uh, for example, the, uh, I had a picture in this, in this uh, presentation of the Anhinga, but the Anhinga doesn't go in salt water. So I, I didn't put it in the birds at the beach. So the birds at the beach, I only have birds that would be around us that you could find around the salt water. Leroy, have you ever about you got a picture of the um, not not the not the the horned grebes, horned grebes? No, I don't have the horned. I, I've seen I, up to eighty. I of have them. the ear grebe, and I have the uh, western grebe. Yeah, a lake weir. A lake weir, there's some of those big flocks of horned grebes. I've seen a, loads of them out there in the winter. Um, yeah, that's just something we might want to think about um, one of these days, maybe get a group together and uh, go over. We can rent a pontoon boat and go around. Uh, last time I went with a group of birds from the villages, we saw a common golden eye, which I'd never seen before. I, I, I don't have any pictures of golden eyes. Oh, no, no, there's only one, yeah. Well, no you know, golden eyes and no burrows golden eyes. Yeah, I, I've never, you know, I'm not a photographer, but but we did spot one of those. Yeah. And there they were, they were horn greaves. Also, uh, the little, um, we call them bluebills, which are the um, lesser Ruby scalps. Ducks. Lesser scalps, lesser scalps. Uh, there's been thousands of them out there sometimes on Lake Weir. I well, mean, the scalps, yeah, the two yeah. scalps I had, the uh, the ring neck duck and the lesser scalp, I, uh, they have them in uh, the villages along 441 yeah. in the lake there. Anyway, I mean, it's an idea uh, if anybody wants to do it sometime. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. Sounds like a great charge. idea. Huh? Sounds like a good idea, Larry. Good I idea, Larry. They, I don't know what they charge. They're pontoon boats. It's no big deal, and, you know. And handling them or anything, you gotta get about eight people on them, you know, to split the cost up. Sure. Uh, probably a good time to go would be after the first of the year, okay. when uh, when Josie's uh, we'll have to carry her onto the boat and carry her off. But <laughs> we'll have to carry, we'll have to carry me off and on too with my back. But, <sighs> but uh, how about our eagle nest? Because she, cause years ago I used to do that every year of the uh, Lake Weir. Uh, but I haven't done it in a few years now. But uh, sometimes you really get a lot of uh, a, a lot of different kinds of birds on that lake. Uh, well, we've seen uh, we've seen um, common loons uh, quite a bit out there. Um, Ozzy, I, yeah, yeah. I uh, yeah. I would like to do that uh, birds at the beach probably sometime next year for the uh, to get my that's my other bird program. Sure. And, and the butterflies, the butterfly program. We'd like I'd a like butterfly to get both program. Of them on this so yeah. the people can enjoy them. This was really good, Leroy. You did a terrific job. Thank you. Awesome. Really. really. Yeah. Any, That's great, Leroy. Thank you. Thank you, Leroy. Yeah. yeah. Are there any other questions going once, where, twice? Where, Leroy, where, where'd you get the Western Grieve? In uh, Bear River. Oh, Where's that? That was in, in uh, New Mexico. No, that was in Utah. It's uh, uh, the north shore of uh, Salt Lake. It's a Bear River. It's a real famous bird sanctuary. Okay. They have lots of uh, they have a lot of they have a lot of birds there. Period. But there was a, a lot of those uh, avises and a lot of uh, still black neck stilts. Yeah. And and uh, the a lot of ducks, the uh, the grieves at the time I was there when I took that picture of the family, the birds could not fly. The ducks could not fly. The, the, they, uh, that was a, at that time of year, they were molting. And uh, you'd see them swimming in a canal. 
but they even dive under the water and get away from, you know, get away from you. But uh, they can swim quite a ways under the water, but they could not fly at that time. I got a picture of one of them that was flapping his wings and, and all the primary feathers were missing. So at that time, they can't fly. There's a short time during the molt when they can't fly. Yeah, those are the ones that do that crazy mating dance, don't they? The uh, Western Grebes? Uh, they I, get up on... I saw the mating dance, but I didn't get a picture of it. I, I saw it once. I did not get a picture of it, but uh, it's, it's quite impressive. Yeah. Leading saw, up to it, too. I saw a pair of them in the Patagonia Lake State Park in Southern Arizona. And the thing that was interesting, there was also a pie bill grebe right near them. And the difference in size was amazing. You wonder how they're even related to each other. Yeah, yeah, they, they don't look much alike. Oh, they're much, much bigger. <laughs> well, their bills are different and everything. They're, yeah. they're totally different looking bird. Yeah. It's amazing well, they're in the same family. <laughs> okay. We thank you, uh, Leroy. We thank you for a wonderful presentation. And uh, this presentation will be recorded, uh, is being recorded right now. And we're going to uh, put it on uh, our new uh, Marion Audubon Society uh, YouTube channel. So thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for, for all this, uh, we'll send the getting link this to program us. together, something I could not have done. Yeah, we're going to put the link on our Facebook page when uh, when we get that all set up. Once again, thank you very much. We much appreciate it. Thanks, See everybody. Uh, I guess we're going to wait next Wednesday. We have a board meeting. Yes. Okay, we'll see you then. You too. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. All yep. right, Josie. Take. Yep. Take care.